things he did need So on bended knee they fell For God to set him free While they were still yet praying Behold a knock at the door Peter stood before them Delivered by the Lord Someone in the house Believed when they prayed Someone believed when they called upon his name Somebody prayed expecting to receive Someone in that house did Let me take this opportunity to say that that uh, I appreciate you watching us online or visiting us in service. It's also all, always a privilege. I had somebody to stop by this Wednesday night and say to me that they'd been watching us online and how that the Word of God had touched their hearts and that humbled me. And I pray that I can always preach the truth in love and and but also preach with conviction. So I, I appreciate you watching us. Uh, if you feel a desire and ever feel uh, like the Lord's speaking to you to give to our local church ministries, I encourage you to do that. You can do that by going to easytithe.com and finding Prospect Church of God there. And uh, you can do that. And I believe there's a QR code there that you can use there that take you directly into our, our giving website. We appreciate that. We are a small church with a big heart and trying to do ministry is tough in the day we live. So I would encourage you to do that if at all possible and uh, not asking you to take tithe from your local church. Your tithe belongs to your local church, not ours. Uh, but maybe there's an offering that you would feel like giving to our church and I would I'd really appreciate that. God bless you. get our service uh, started uh, today let's uh, we're gonna open up in prayer and then brother Danny's got a video to play for us from the pastor we'll open up in prayer let's all stand good to have all of our visitors with us good to have everyone here today and welcome brother uh, Leon Jones sister Gayla we're glad to have them with us this morning and they're gonna be with us tonight as well Heavenly Father we just give you glory honor and praise I pray for every need each need that's represented here this morning that you'll supply that need you'll draw us closer and closer to you the holy ghost will have his complete way in this service 
that you'll anoint everything that's said and done. Anoint Brother Jones as he preaches the gospel to us today. Anoint our ears and hearts to receive your word today. And let the Holy Ghost have his way in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Danny, go ahead and play the video. Praise the Lord. Uh, we have any veterans here. Let's honor our veterans here before we take up our offering. Any veterans, let's stand if you're a veteran. Let's, and Brother Hancock, he, yes. Let's give them a round of applause. We thank you for your service. If it wasn't for your service and what you did, we wouldn't be able to be here. We wouldn't be able to enjoy the freedoms that we enjoy. Praise the Lord. Thank God for our veterans and the freedom that they fought for to give us. We honor our veterans today. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, at our, this time receive our uh, offering. This is our regular tithing offering. This goes for our church expense. I'll ask Brother Patrick to help me receive the offering, and I'll ask him to pray over the offering as well. before it's now amen i already had that song on my list i was going to do it second but i think we need to go ahead and do that song first do you still believe that we live in a nation that needs to be blessed by god are you thankful for your veterans let me ask you this are you thankful for the fact that we can come in here and do what we're doing right now and we're not breaking the law do you understand what i'm saying stand to your feet and let's not only give honor where honor's due to our veterans, but to God Almighty, Almighty. Yes. who and up until now, we still have this privilege freely. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful to our veterans, but I am thankful to God that so far we still live in a blessed nation. Amen. And we need that prayer more than ever. God bless America. And oh, by the way, that can be a worship song. Amen. So let's sing it together. God bless. America land that I love stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountain to the prairies to the oceans white going to stay right there in that key and you know sometimes the Lord just messes up your schedule <laughs> sometimes he just changes things right in the midst and that's okay that's called following this presence of the Holy Spirit amen we don't have the words on this screen but you know the words to this let's sing it welcome Holy Spirit come on sing it out church we are in the Oh, 
you need the hymnal, it's page 168. 168 on the first. I have heard the call of Jesus and I'm on my journey home. I have left the haunts of sorrow and despair. I am walking with the righteous and I care no more to roam. Charms no longer tempt me, for in Him I stand complete, and I'm trying to lead others to His side. All my heavy trials daily, He is helping me to meet. Oh, He is the soul's true helper, friend, and God. Sing it out. When my name is called in glory, I'll be
this morning as you're seated. Hallelujah. Are you looking forward to that when you be up there with him? No, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more of this strife that's going on in this evil world. We'll be there with him for all eternity. I'm looking forward to that time. Uh, the ch our children can be dismissed for Children's Church at this time. God, don't you think, thank God that He does love us. He loved us enough to die on that cruel cross for our sins. Once again, I want to welcome every one of our visitors. We welcome each and every one of you here. Uh, at this time, uh, uh, we'll let Brother Leon Jones come and bring the word to us. Brother, Brother Jones, we appreciate you and your wife, Sister Gala. You're a blessing to prospect. You've been a friend to our church, and I want you to know I appreciate it. You and the times of fellowship that me and my mom have had with you. I want you to know that. Thank you, my brother. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Thank you. Well, can we give Jesus some praise this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, he's so good to us, church. Can you say amen? I'd rather have Jesus than anything in this world. We used to sing about that. I love him. He's been good to me. Amen, amen, amen. He's been so good to me. So good to be with you this morning. Thank you, Pastor Gann, for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you, church, for the opportunity to be here. Been a while since I've been here. Amen. Been a while. Been all over the country. Just hadn't been here. Sister Shirley asked Gail a while ago, said, you about got this guy straightened out. She said, God sees him more than I do, so she, he's going to have to do the job. <laughs> Amen. And that's about the truth. A week ago, I was in Illinois. A week before that, I was in Illinois. Week before that, I was in Kentucky. Next week at this time, we'll be in Harrison, Ohio. And I can't remember where I'm going to be after that next week. But uh, our long, far as several day trips are uh, past now until after the first of the year. I'm glad to be home for a little while. Amen. I'm glad to be home. Amen, amen. I need to say to somebody uh, in this room or maybe listening later uh, that... There's deliverance for you. Whatever has you bound, whatever has you uh, all bound up, there's deliverance for you. Whether it be sin, whether it be uh, a habit, whether it be tradition, whether it be uh, sickness, or so whatever it may be, there's deliverance for you, for you. Now, through whom does that deliverance come? His name is Jesus, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. With man it may be impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Uh, I've heard people say, you know, it's in my gene pool. Daddy had it, Mama had it, and Granny had it, and Granddad had it, and so on and so forth. The blood of Jesus breaks all of that stuff. The blood of Jesus breaks that chain, that generational curse if you please. For there are, is such a thing as generational curses, but I know the blood that was shed on Calvary's hill is more than enough to break those curses. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. And I just needed to tell somebody, if God deal with me back there, that there is deliverance for you today. There's no need for you to continue being bound. I declare freedom for you in the name of Jesus if you will just reach out for it and then receive it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So good to see all of you today. Good to have you precious folks playing and singing for us today. And Sunday school teacher, you've done a wonderful job this morning. Thank you so very, very much. A man of the word. I've quoted several scripture in what little time I was here. Tells me he's a man of the word. He's been a student of the word. And we all should be. 
we should be able to give an answer for why we believe what we believe. And the only answer is the Word of God, the Scripture of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can you say amen? Amen. We want to continue, remember, brother and sister Gann and their families. I understand both of their families are facing some uh, severe and serious health issues. We want to continue to remember them. Um, unless the Lord comes, we're all going to face those times. And uh, I'm entering that season in life where I have friends who have parents who are declining in their health, and uh, those are not comfortable days. Those are, uh, can be very trying days, uh, very uh, challenging days, emotionally, physically, financially, in every way. Uh, but those days are coming to each of us. My prayer is, Lord, come and get us in the rapture, Amen. or just let me be preaching and drop right here, one or the other. Amen. Fine with me. I've given my life to this thing. Yes. And I've asked God to let me live to be 100 and be in the pulpit and just take me home. Yes. Well, y'all got quiet for all of a sudden. Yes. I can't think of a better place. I can't think of a better place myself. Now, don't worry about it. It ain't going to happen today. I'm not 100 yet. <laughs> Some of you are looking, oh, Brother Jones. Well, I'm not 100 yet. You believe God can do that? Yes. I've asked him is all I know. Yes. Amen. This morning I want to speak to you. My subject is question, whom say ye that I am? Whom say ye that I am? Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. What an honor to be in the house of God this morning. My, how God has been moving and how he's been touching lives. And I see that, uh, see some new faces here I hadn't seen before, which tells me that you're growing and I found that last week over in Illinois. Uh, they're growing over there in a little old community. All it's got is a post office and two churches and a bunch of drugs. That's all it's got. That little church is growing and just doing super. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 15. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? But he saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Father, would you touch us with that touch this morning, anoint me with that anointing that makes preaching and ministry effective for your glory and for your honor. Use me today. I beg you to save lost souls, sanctify hearts and lives, fill believers with the sweet Holy Ghost, heal all sickness and disease, set the captive free, break every yoke and chain of bondage, and perform miracles and signs and wonders for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we give him a clap off and a praise as we'll be seated in his sweet Holy Presence? this morning. Amen and amen. We have here a private conversation or a private conference that Christ is having with his disciples concerning himself. It was in the coast of Caesarea Philippi, the utmost borders of the land of Canaan northward. It was there in that remote corner, perhaps, there were less flocking after him than in other places, which gave him the leisure or the opportunity for this private conversation with his disciples. The question he said, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am, the Lord asked. In the dignity of conscious divinity, he had never asked such a question before. He needed not the opinions of men. He sought not their praise. He knew their hearts, but he asked for the sake of the apostles to bring their vague thoughts into clear distinction to deepen their convictions, to confirm their faith. There were many opinions as to who he was. There were some who said that he was John the Baptist, risen from his martyr's tomb. Some thought that he was a prophet Elijah, come again as Malachi had prophesied. Some said he might be Jeremiah, come to restore the ark as the Jews hoped. Others imagined that he might be one of the other old prophets, come perhaps as a forerunner of the Messiah. Such were the various opinions current among the people. But Jesus wanted to know those closest to him, who do you think I am? Who do you say I am? Church, we, the body of Christ, should have a greater uh, opinion, a greater answer as to who he is because we've experienced what he is. 
Oh, I've experienced him to be everything I would ever need or ever hope for in this life and in the life to come. Why did Jesus ask this question? His concern was not so much about the public impression as it was about the effect he had that had been produced upon the minds and the hearts of those who had been the nearest to him all of this time. The church should always have a more distinct opinion than the world. The world doesn't want Christ. What's going on in Israel today is not anything other than evil against righteousness. That's all it is. And that's all these wars have ever been about is righteousness virtuous versus unrighteousness. And I need to say this. I was out walking yesterday morning as I do my daily walk. And uh, the scripture came to mind. It just came to my spirit again a while ago. Not a scripture. It needs should be a scripture, but it's not. And that is when the righteous remain silent, evil does prevail. When the righteous remain silent, it's time the righteous say, I'm taking a stand. I stand for the whole word of God, rightly divided. I will not back down. You have to take my life, whatever you have to do. I will stand for what's right. I stand for the Lord Jesus Christ. And as a member of the body of Christ, I stand with Israel as well. Amen. You see, the view entertained about Christ in the world, the different phases of opportunity of opinion concerning the Lord's personality and his offers are subject of interest to the student of theology. But I'm here to tell you the body of Christ has a totally more uh, perfect opinion or uh, thought of what the Lord Jesus Christ is. The disciples had been better taught than others. They had by their intimacy with the Lord greater advantages of getting knowledge than others had. Let me stop long enough to say there are those who serve the Lord for years and have zero knowledge almost. Amen. You know why that is? Because they were not walking close with Him. They're not walking in intimacy with Him. I know what makes that girl tick back here and I know what makes her upset. I know what pushes her buttons and what buttons I need not push. I'm a slow learner, and I still push some of them sometimes. <laughs> Sir, it really wasn't that funny. He's over here just grinning at me like, I'm glad it's you and not me. <laughs> Amen. But as we walk with one another and we spend time with one another, we get a clear, distinct vision of what that individual is. And as we walk close to the Lord Jesus Christ, hand in hand, in and out of every day, day in and day out, we have a more distinct opinion. We have a more distinct uh, knowledge of what our personal Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is and what He will always be. Jesus Christ is same yesterday and today and forever he doesn't change the world changes time changes we changes the church has changed but he said I change not amen all right somebody praise him in his presence Woo! I have to tell you if you say amen, it's like saying you're sick of a bulldog today because I hadn't preached since last, since last Sunday night over in Broken, Illinois. I've had all this week to rest, and I've done that. I've been in the bed by 9 o'clock every night, some nights at 8 o'clock. Everybody who's bald-headed ought to be in bed by 8 o'clock. <laughs> Especially when he stays up to 1 or 2 when he's out preaching revivals. Amen. What are some of the opinions and answers or responses and answers that Christ received in answer to this question? Some say thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Peter does not hesitate or doubt for one moment. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ. <laughs> How could he make such a uh, bold statement? Because he spent time with him. 
Church, it's time the church of the living God gets close to God. How close can I get to you, Lord? How much of me can you stand today? I often say to him, because I remember what John 3 and 30 says, he must increase and I must decrease. Oh, how much of me can you stand today? How much of me can I give to you today so that I may have more of you? It is time that the church of the living God quits talking about someone they don't really know and get to know him, get to walking with him and talking with him, breathing like he breathes. We should be so close to him, he can't take a breath without us being aware of it. Amen. I remember when that first baby of ours was born. We had a cradle right beside my side of the bed. And that's where she lay. There were times she wouldn't go to sleep except she was laying on my chest for whatever reason. I'd lay her in there. I'd hear her breathing. If I didn't hear I looked. I'd wake up and turn over and look. I wanted to know when that child was breathing when she wasn't breathing. We can be so close to somebody. We know all that's going on with them. When the breathing is irregular. When the breathing isn't normal. When the reactions. We should be able to know one another close enough. We can just look at one another's eyes and say, you're not feeling well today. Something going on with you today. I can tell you're upset about something. How is it? Because we know that person so well. Hello? And I don't say them things. That you're doing fine, brother. You're doing fine, brother. Amen. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. My babies. I, I can listen to that youngest one on the phone. Baby, what's wrong? Oh, I'm fine, Daddy. No, you're not. Amen. You're going to split a hell wide open line to me. Amen. What's wrong with you? Oh, Daddy, it's okay. No, it's not. What's wrong with you? I could tell by her voice. I was in, Gail, I forgot the name, Ottawa, Illinois, sitting in a dealership. Generous Motors dealership up there, right off I-80. Car sitting in the bay in there, blown up, two years old, 116,000 miles on it. Didn't have the money to fix it because they wanted over $9,000 with another engine. And it was a remanufactured. It wasn't a new one because the new ones go in the new cars. And my baby called. Hey, Daddy. I said, hey, baby. She said, what's wrong? I said, what do you mean, what's wrong? Daddy, I can tell by your voice something ain't right. And I began to tell her what was going on. Why was that? Because she's known me every day of her life. She knows when daddy's all right, and she knows when daddy ain't all right. She knows when mama's all right, and she knows when mama ain't all right. Why is it? Because we spend time with one another. Oh, God, may the church of the Lord Jesus Christ get back to that place where she spends so much time in prayer and so much time fasting and so much time in God's Word getting to know Him that we personally know Him. He isn't somebody we hear about on Sunday, but He's somebody we walk with and we talk with and we live with. He's my partner in life. Amen. Amen. He wants to be more than an acquaintance, honey. He wants to be our lover. He wants to be our friend. He wants to be the bridegroom. He wants us for his bride. Woo! Amen. Now, how would the different writers of the Bible answer this question? In Genesis, he's the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's a Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's our high priest. In Numbers, he's a pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he's a prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's a captain of our salvation. In Judges, he's our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he is our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he is our trusted prophet. Let me stop there just a minute. We need some men and women who are true prophets and prophetess of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, I've had many come over to me and lay their hand to me and say, thus saith the Lord. And I'm thinking the Lord didn't say nothing, thus saith you. Why? Because they weren't true prophets. I'm here to tell you that a true prophet or prophetess, their prophecy will come to pass. Amen. Now, we're all human and we can miss it. 
And if for some reason one does miss it, don't fall out with Jesus because of it. Well, you know, I don't know about that. They missed it. It wasn't right. I don't know. Maybe there ain't anything to this thing. Shut up. You serving Jesus, honey. You ain't serving some man or woman. Amen. You're supposed to be serving Jesus. I don't care if the whole crowd backslides and goes to hell. And there's been a few times when I pastored some and I thought we're on their way to hell. I'm going to serve the Lord. My faith, my confidence is in him, not in some human being. If you've got your confidence in a human being, honey, you better get it out lest you be hurt, lest you be betrayed, lest you be let down because we're going to let each other down sometime or another. Our confidence, our faith must be in the King of glory. The great I am that I am that I am. His name is Jesus and he'll never let you down. Amen. Right. Well, my God, I feel him in my soul this morning. Woo! In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reigning king. In Ezra, he's the rebuilder of the broken down walls of life. In Esther, he's our Mordecai. In Job, he's our ever-living redeemer. In Psalms, he's our shepherd. In Proverbs and Ecclesiastes, he's our wisdom. In the Song of Solomon, he's our lover and a bridegroom. In Isaiah, he's our prince of peace. In Jeremiah, he's a righteous branch. In Ezekiel, he's a wonderful four-faced man. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's a faithful husband forever married to the backslider. Let me stop there a minute and talk about backsliding. It can happen to any of us at any time none of us are exempt from walking away from God but I'm here to tell you if you've walked away from God the road back to God is easy the road back to God leads you back to Jesus you can come home anytime you feel the spirit of God drawing you I want you to leave out of here and go call that pastor and tell him how mean I've been today but I'm going to tell you the church has made it hard on backsliders sometimes. We've treated them like they're doomed for hell and there's no hope for them. Some of us sitting in this room have backslid before and come back. And we backslid again and came back. And we backslid again and came back. I've asked God, Taylor tell you, I've asked God to take a few of them home while they were right. Because they might not be right after lunch. But you've been a pastor, haven't you? Have you been a pastor before? So should. Have you seen that happen? They backslide two or three times in a week, it seems like. You know what backsliding is? Just coming back, repenting of your sins, and picking up where you left off at. Just pick up where you left off at. We make it so, oh, you got to jump through this hoop. You got to attend this class. You got to go over here to this uh, counseling center. You got to be counseled so many sessions by this one. And then if you pass all of the hoops and the, all of this stuff, you can come to. Uh, no. Jesus said he was forever married to him. Amen. My heart goes out to backslider. Something happened somewhere along the line. Something happened. They got hurt. They got broken. They got. Uh, they became dissolute. Something happened. My job is to help them. He said he's forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he's a baptizer with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he's a burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's a mighty to save. In Jonah, he's our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he's a messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he's the avenger of God's elect. And Abaca, he's God's evangelist crying, revive thy work in the midst of thy years. And Zephaniah, he's our savior. And Haggai, he's a restorer of God's lost heritage. And Zechariah, he's a fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanliness. And Malachi, he's the son of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. Oh, what would those in the New Testament, how would they begin to describe what they see the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is? Matthew, he's the Messiah. In Luke, he's a son of God. In John, he's a son. Uh, Luke, he's the son of man. John, he's the son of God. In Acts, he is the Holy Ghost. In Romans, he's our justifier. In First and Second Chronicles, he is our sanctifier. 
In Galatians, he's a redeemer from the curse of the law. In Ephesians, he's a Christ of unsearchable riches. In Philippians, he's a God who supplies all of my needs. In Colossians, he's a fullness of the Godhead bodily. In First and Second Thessalonians, he's our soon coming king. How I lift up your head for your redemption. Draw it nigh. Watch and pray for in an hour when you think not the Son of Man cometh. I've never seen a time when I believe he could come at any moment as it is right now in 2023. Amen. And first and second Timothy, he's our mediator between God and man. And Titus, he's our faithful pastor. In Philemon, he's a friend that's sticky closer than a brother. In Hebrews, he's the blood of the everlasting covenant. In James, he's a great physician for the prayer of the faithful shall save the sick. In first and second Peter, he's our chief shepherd who shall appear with a crown of unfading glory. In first, second, third John, he is love. Oh, and we who are his will be known by the love that is shed abroad in our hearts, the love of Christ Jesus. Oh God, let us walk and let us talk as believers in a world that is so dark and plagued with sin and unrighteousness today and may Jesus be on full display in our lives, amen. Amen. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Oh no, they're gonna know if you're his disciple by the education you got, dotty, dotty, down education. Amen. Well, they're gonna know by how many scriptures you know. No. Oh, they're going to know by what size church? No. They're going to know by the love of Jesus Christ that oozes through your spirit and oozes out of your mouth and out of your ears and out of your eyes. By this shall all men know that you're my disciples if you have love one for another. Amen. I got to feel him in my soul. In Jude, he's the Lord coming with 10,000 of his saints. In Revelation, he's the King of kings and Lord of lords. To me, he's my Savior. He's my friend. He's my Lord. December 2nd, 2023, which is less than 30 days away now. I will have been saved 51 years. Oh, I know that ain't nothing. Some of you probably been saved 100 years or more. I'm just a young whippersnapper getting started. It's been the best life I've ever known in my lifetime. I wouldn't trade this for nothing. He'd been good to me when I wasn't good to him. And God, I got a lot of catching up on the good side. Hello? Because I'm lacking on the good side. But he ain't. I'm a little behind on my good side. Been good to me. Great is the Lord and he's greatly to be praised because of who he is and what he is and what he's done for you and I. Amen? He's everything I could ever hope him to be. He's been my rock is surer than the rock of Gibraltar. He's been my salvation when I didn't know if I was even saved or not at times. He's been my sanctifier when I needed my mouth cleaned up and I needed my walk cleaned up and I needed my eyes cleaned up when I needed my attitude cleaned up. Now folks say a little better amen over here than you all are. Y'all got some catching up to do, okay? Sometimes my attitude's got out of kilter. Now they're saying amen more than you are over here now. Sometimes I said things when I should have been quiet. Last Saturday I was standing by Jones Lake. You didn't know there was a lake called Jones Lake, did you? It's over in southern Illinois. I found it last Saturday. They were going for family pictures, but what they didn't know is this young man was going to propose to this young lady down by that lake. 
And I was talking to the soon-to-be father-in-law of this young man. And he was telling me about some of the things the old granddaddy used to say. And he said something that just kind of struck a chord. He said, granddaddy used to say, be quiet and sound smart. Be quiet and you'll sound smart. I've always said it this way. It's better for me to be thought a fool than to open my mouth and remove all doubt. Another precious man of God taught me to do this. If you can't say anything good, just breathe through your nose. All that's good stuff. Come and help me, please. Whom do you say that Christ is? Is he your Passover lamb? Is he your high priest? Is he the captain of your salvation? Is he your reigning king? Is he your ever living redeemer? Your shepherd? Is he your lover and bridegroom? Your prince of peace? Your burden bearer? Your savior? Your messiah? Is he the wonder worker in your life? Is he the son of man? Is he the son of God? Is he your justifier in your life? How about him? Being your sanctifier, that one that gets us straightened back out when we get all out of kilter and out of out of sorts. Uh, is he the Christ of unsearchable riches to you? Is he the God who supplies all of your needs? Is he your soon coming king or look you for another? Is he your faithful pastor? Is he your great physician? Is he your king of kings? Is he your Lord of lords in your life? Or is he nothing more than a picture that hangs on your wall? Or a book you set on the coffee table when the preacher scheduled to come by. Come on, come on, or is he someone you call on, on. when the babies are sick? Yes, yes. Or is he your very breath in your lungs? Amen, my God. Are you in love with him this morning? Yes, sir. Or are you heavily in like with him? There's a difference. A girl sitting back there, when she walked through that door, just like that baby lady did right then, in that white flowing gown at 2470 Princeton Pike in Hamilton, Ohio, at about somewhere around 7.30, 7.40 in the, after, in the evening, I thought I was in love. I started crying when I saw her. The pastor reached over and patted me and said, it's okay, don't cry. Don't cry, it's okay. He didn't know why I was crying. My thinking, well, how did I get so lucky? Oh, God. I owe you heavy, God. I owe you big time. And I'll tell you people in front of her, I married up when I married her. I said I married up, and any smart man will admit to that. Thank you, brother. Got one Amen. You can't say amen, brother. Do you know what I've learned after 46 years going on our 47th year? You know what I've learned? I didn't know the first thing about love that day. After 46 years of in the sunshine and the rain, when we had plenty and when we didn't have nothing, when we rode around on ball tires, when we rode around no car quit any time I now know a little more after all those years about what love is and after all these years of serving him I can say I love him today do you love him today have you been through some things together it draws you closer if you don't let it spread you apart if you don't let it divide you, it'll bring you closer. Could I ask you to do something? I started to say this ain't spiritual, but it can be spiritual. This country needs a bringing together. Let it start with us today at lunch. You already got your lunch. I see it. At lunch, every time that little girl comes to the table, or a little man comes to that table, don't let them out of your sight before you say, thank you. Thank you. I don't care if you order two eggs. 
one scrambled and one over easy. I don't care if she brings the wrong one scrambled back. You thank her for it. Amen. Let's be kind. Amen. Let's start out by just being kind to one another. I heard a man say this morning, and I'm with you, man. He said, if we do more of this, and let's run our mouth fussing at one another, this country would be in a lot better shape today. You might know what I'm talking about? Appreciate you, young man. You seem like a fine young man. You're holding on that girl off tight. You afraid she's going to get away? I'm messing with you, baby. He's a lot prettier when he smiles. I'm messing with you. If we'll do that, instead of complaining about everything, this country would be a lot better country. Could we start doing that as a body of Christ? Is that okay? If we just start loving on people. We, we could go this past week. I was coming back to Marion, Marion, Illinois with a young man. Highway patrolman pulled over and I knew he wasn't speeding because I've been watching his speed. And he said, young man, I pulled you over because your stickers expired on your license plate. Well, the one that was shown on his license plate was 2022. It's time for 2024. He two years behind. They run all his paperwork and said, Honey, you bought it, but where is it? He said, I have no idea where it's at. For those of you who have a tendency to procrastinate, take a baby wipe and a towel with you to the tag office. And when you get that sticker, go out there and wipe that old one, wipe it down, dry it off, and stick that new one right there on it, and throw that piece of paper in the glove box so you got it. Amen? And if you don't put it on right, take a screwdriver, take the tag off, the little lady inside will put it on there for you. Then you can take it back in and screw it back on there. Why are y'all looking at me like that? She will, I promise you. You know what I said to that officer? Thank you, sir. Thank you for your kindness. He was as gentle and as kind an officer as I've ever seen in my life. And I told that young man, I said, honey, you've never been stopped before, so you don't know anything about this stuff. But that man was kind to you, honey. That man was very gentle to you. That goes a long ways with humanity. And if I'm pulled over and I'm the one doing the talking when he comes to the window, I'm going to invite him to step to the other side of the car if he'd like to. So that maybe he won't get killed by somebody who's texting or not watching. Because I care for him. <laughs> Would you stand all over the room with me? Whom say ye that I am? He wants to be everything to you. And all that I shared from the Word of God, He is to you if you will allow Him to be. The first thing He wants to be to you is your Savior. For all of sin comes short of the glory of God. David said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. We come into this thing and sin. That baby back there, that that grandmother won't let do just whatever he wants to do. She keeps jerking him back. I keep trying to get the people to run in church and she's trying to keep him from running in church. Do you know that baby was born into sin? We don't like to think that, not that baby. If he's not already, he'll be lying for long. He don't have to be taught to lie. That baby don't have to be taught. It comes with, it comes with the breath. What he got to be taught to do is not to lie. Now that baby, you don't have to teach that baby to keep his hands to himself. He'll be picking up this fruit bar here before long. It's in his nature to do that. 
What we got to do is teach him, honey, keep your hands off of stuff that don't belong to you. Am I not right? So it's in our nature. But we have a Savior. Because he knows that we are but dust. We're the dust is all we are. Would you bow your hearts and heads with me? Father, I'm so honored. I feel you in my soul this morning. Touch the people, Jesus. Touch the people, Jesus. If you touch them, change will come. Minister to them for your glory and for your honor. Save anyone who's lost today. Well, honor and love you for it all in Jesus' name. If I could have just a little bit more monitor back there, brother. With your heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today, and you say, Preacher, I don't know this Jesus on a personal level that you preached about this morning. You can. For He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He said the whole need not a physician, but they who are sick need a physician. And if you're here this morning, you don't know Jesus. I'm going to ask you to step out to your nearest aisle and walk down to this front right here. I'll meet you here. But he'll be with you the very moment you take that first step. He'll be with you. If your sins haven't been forgiven, if you've not invited Jesus to come into your heart as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe you have in the past, but you're not living as close as you once did, in either predicament, He's here to save you. He's here for you to rededicate your life to. Anybody, anywhere in the name of Jesus, would you just step out? If you're not ready to meet the Lord, you could meet Him. You could meet Him. There were six killed over in Texas early yesterday morning. They were minding their own business. And the car went through light. Killed a former NFL player. And five other individuals. It could be us. We don't know that. These interstates are death traps anymore, children. I promise you, I'm on them enough. You may not have tomorrow. I beg if your heart ain't right to step to the nearest aisle and come down this morning, please, in the name of Jesus. I beg you, Lord, to save anybody who's lost. I beg you, Lord. Don't put it off anymore. Preacher, I'll come when I'm ready, honey. It's not when you're ready. It's when he's ready. The Bible said, except the Spirit of God draw you, you can't come. And the Spirit of God's here drawing you today. And I beg you to respond in a positive manner and say, I'm coming. I'm coming home today. Come home, come home. The master is awaiting. Anybody anywhere, I won't linger here long. But I can't leave this property without first giving you an ample opportunity to make a wise choice and a wise decision today to follow Jesus. Anybody anywhere while the saints of God are pleading with Jesus? Anybody anywhere? I'm going to wait just a moment more. I don't care who you are, what your age is. He died for you. And He'll save you today if you'll come and let Him. I preach, I don't understand it. Honey, I didn't either. They just told me I was a sinner and I need to be saved. If I'd come to the altar, He'd save me. As a 16-year-old boy, I went to that altar and I got saved. And I can tell you for 51 years, it's been good. For 51 years, it's been the best choice I've made in my lifetime. I'd do it all over again, only I'd do it about 10 or 15 years younger than 16. Anybody anywhere before I close this part of the service? All right. Let me open your eyes and look at me. I'm going to ask your church to get out of your seats and just come and stand in the front here. Just get out of your seats and come and stand in front of you with me. We do this every time I have the privilege of coming. And when I say Savior, oh 
yes. My blood. Sing it under him. Sing it in worship under him. Sing it in the praise of the church. But when I say Jesus, He speaks peace to me. If you're here today, you're standing here in front of me. You say, Brother Leon. I need this Jesus that is all things to all people to touch me today. You have a desire for the Master to touch you, touch your family members, touch your finances, touch whatever. I ask you to just come and just stand right in this area right here. And I will be honored as well as the members of this body will be honored to pray with you and agree with you that God touch you and minister to you. Would you come? Anybody anywhere? The only prayer he won't answer is the one you won't pray. He said, asking you what? You have not because you? Amen. Anybody need special prayer? Anybody have a desire for Jesus to touch you today? Come forward. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now it works. I can tell you right here. I've talked about this girl in several churches I've been in. How that service after service I've heard her give a prayer request in. Pray God will save my children and my grandchildren. And I remember when she was the only one sitting on that bench. Today you ain't got no benches. You got seats. I didn't count them today, but the last time I counted them, there was nine seats in her row with ten bodies in those nine seats. Now, I don't know how many is in them today, but this works. It works. And I want us to come, church, right now. Move in closer to these who've come for prayer. I'm going to start with my bride. She's in need of a touch of God today. She needs healing in different areas of her body today. She's prayed to pray, pray to pray, pray the prayer of faith for many others. And now she needs healing. Would you just get close? Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for Gayla this morning, God. Touch her body and minister to her from the top of that head all the way down to the bottom of her feet. I declare your word over her that by your stripes she's healed. I declare your word over her, Lord, that you're the Lord our God that healeth her. I declare your word over her. You said, I will heal thee. As well as under all who are sick, minister to her. I speak to that sickness to be gone. I speak to that disease to be gone. In the name of Jesus, right now, her body is not a dumping ground for sickness, germ, or disease. Her body is a temple of the most holy ghost of heaven. Minister to her, leave her healthy and well, strong in her body. In Jesus' name. Lord, we pray for Sister Shirley. Say, Master. Lord, the same request. Say, my family. My sorrows. God, I thank you for a full row. But now there needs to be two rows full. God, the same prayer she said. Say, my family. God, save that family. God, every last one of them. As you save several of them now, save the rest of them. Get the rest of them heaven ready. Get the rest of them rapture ready. God, I declare your word today that simply says, you and your household shall be saved. God, I declare your word over these souls today. Train up a child in the way you go when he grows old and not depart from it. You said what said we shall ask and pray believe and we shall receive. God, you're bringing the rest of this family in today. You're going to save them in the name of Jesus. There's going to be a second row of seats filled with Shirley's family. In the name of Jesus today. In Jesus' name. Anybody else? Yes, Pastor Brother. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I first pray for lost family members. God, that you save these lost people. 
master. Get them rapture ready. Get them heaven ready, God. I ask you to just set a hook in them and set it real good and start tightening up that line and reeling them in. From the north, south, east, and west, bring them home. Bring them in. It's time they come home. Oh, the time is at hand, Lord. We're about to wind this thing up called time. This journey of life, Lord, it could end for any of us at any moment. Father, in the name of Jesus, save family members. And God, I pray for this sciatic nerve, Father. Whatever's going on, the back and leg, I pray the neck, whatever, God, that you'll minister healing. I declare your word over him that by your stripes, this man is healed of every situation that he faces. I declare over him the word of God. I am the Lord thy God and healeth thee. I declare the word of God over here that simply says, I will heal thee. In Jesus' name, we receive that healing. We receive it. We embrace it. And it shall happen in the name of Jesus. Now we praise you and glorify and honor you. Oh, lift up your voice. Lift up your heart in praise and worship under the only one who's worthy this morning. I love you, Lord. I thank you for being so good. Thank you for healing. Thank you for answering prayer. Thank you for saving all souls today. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name this morning. Anybody else? I don't want to be in a hurry. Make sure everybody has an opportunity. If you need special prayer, yes. Father, I pray that you'll reach down and touch his knee. And I'm asking you to smite out of existence that infection, that staff, that infection, whatever it may be. We speak the word of God over her. All greater is he that is within us than he that is in the world. I speak the word of God over her by your stripes and zeal. Use that medical team there to get to the root of the problem and speak to them and give them direction to get this lady on her feet again and doing well without any pain and discomfort. We pray for divine restoration and wholeness and completeness concerning this situation in the name of Jesus. Do I have a witness somewhere this morning? Oh, give him glory and honor and praise. Thank you for healing and raising her up and making her whole and well. Anybody else? Woo, glory. I feel him in my soul. I feel him in my soul today. <laughs> Trying to say this in a way you'll understand. I'm old-fashioned, so I have to try to think of new-fashioned ways to say some things because I'm so old-fashioned. You don't have to feel him like I feel, but I promise you if you find yourself in his holy presence, you will feel something. You will feel something. I've cried before. I fell on my face on the floor before. I've run before. I've hollered before. I've jumped straight up and down before. I've slapped my brother before when I felt him. But I promise you, if you ever encounter the authentic divine presence of deity, you will feel something. I promise you, if you don't, you did encounter the one I encountered on December 2nd, 1972. You didn't encounter the one I encountered because before I ever went to the altar, I felt him. Before I ever got up from that seat on the front row in Melbourne, Oklahoma, I felt him. Oh, glory. Amen. What an honor to be in God's house today. What a privilege to be in God's house today. Can we give him glory and honor and thanksgiving for just being here? Amen, 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 amen. Don't forget to pray for Pastor and Sister Gann and their families. Some serious, serious situations. Now, can I ask you a question about him? Is he there for you when you need him? Can we be any less than be there for him when he needs us? Amen. Please pray for those folks. They need your help right now. And I'm so thankful I have the opportunity to be here today 
to certainly not fill his shoes because they're bigger than mine. But to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Love you. Look forward to seeing you tonight at 6 o'clock.